Oh, hello? Whoa. Hello, Mr. Kevin McDonald. Hello. Hello. It is, uh, hello. It, hello. It is an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to speak to one of the greatest comedy <laughs> legends of all time from the greatest. Oh, I thought I shut that off. Oh, there's like a laugh track. It's okay. The greatest sketch troops of all time. <laughs> Damn it. I thought I shut the. You can't hear the laugh track. Can you hear the laugh track? You can't hear the laugh track. Okay, there's a laugh track in my ears. I thought I shut it off. I'm a, I'm a professional streamer for three and a half years, and I don't know my ass from uh, my elbow. You want me to get seven or eight people in uh, the office, I mean, and get them to fake laugh? <laughs> if you want to get an audience behind you, and then we can try to time it up, and I'll give you a hand hey, signal. seven or eight people want to come here and just laugh. <laughs> no matter what. I'm sure they're coming. Um, you are true Canadian royalty in my heart. I had a drunk dad. I have a bag full of wigs right here. I have a pile of unwashed costumes behind this green screen. I live Mate. in the shadows of the kids in the hall, and they, to me, are my Monty Python. So it is an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. I was luckier. My Monty Python was Monty Python. I know, right? And I, people get really mad when I say that, but I'm already trying to trigger my chat into uh, getting upset. Um, <laughs> How are you doing, sir? The most generic I'm question ever. I'm doing fine. Okay. I'm doing fine. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I always say this, by the way. Uh, Monty Python are the Beatles of sketch comedy, and the kids in the hall are the Duran Duran of sketch comedy. You want to go Duran Duran? Don't you want to go more punk rock than that? Or like... Well, uh, well like in joke world, I go Duran Duran because it's funnier. <laughs> okay, in real I life, I really serious. think it's... <laughs> In real life, I think it's, um, uh, she must be a Duran Duran fan. Pixies are the replacements. There we go. That's excellent, yes. Um, I have three pages of notes. I won't keep you very long, I promise. <laughs> um, the first one, do you think that sketch comedy right now is sort of on a downtrend? Do you think its popularity is not where it once was? Um, I wonder. I know there's a great show right now. The, the, show help a lot. I think you should leave. I yeah, think that's great. Like, uh, I think that's like a, that'll be thought of, I think, as an all-time classic sketch show. Absolutely. So that always helps. And a few years ago, there was Key and Peele, uh, Amy Schumer. Like, it, go, it always goes in waves. Just um, waves. It goes um, in waves. So can, you have here. can you have facial hair and do sketch comedy? <laughs> Let me think. Good. By the way, good question. Yes, Serious thank you. question. Uh, I think it can. Uh, um, you can even play women. Uh, or just a woman with a beard. We're living in 2023. Why can't women have beards? On my stream, I was uh, hesitant to even attempt. To, I play some characters. Hesitant to even attempt to do a female character. Because I live in the shadows of your guys' female character work. Get out and, of the shadows! Get out of the shadows! Rip them off First me. of all, I want you to enjoy your life. And second of all, we'll sue you if you're sitting <laughs> in the shadows. Um, but anyways, I did end up playing an older lady with a beard. Just... You know, just, yeah. just Why not? whatever, I, right? I believe it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, <laughs> I gave in to the demands. My eyes look, my eyes look kind of blue on this. Uh... You look, you look good. I like, I, 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 for me, for me, I look good. Uh, Dave Foley, uh, people always have beautiful blue eyes, blue eyes. And then to me, they always say, oh, yeah, you do have blue eyes. There's no filters, right, Kevin? Can I call you Kevin? That's okay, right? Yeah. Okay. You, you can call me. Uh, why don't you call me Kevin Filter? I think that would be fun. Kevin Filter. All right, Mr. Filter. Um, yes. Uh, this is a deep question here that I wanted to get into. <laughs> I got to find this quote. Bob Odenkirk, in his book, said that sketch comedy yeah. is the province of young people who love ideas over everything, and that when he did his Mr. Show new season on Netflix, it wasn't as successful as he'd liked, and he blamed it on maybe, not blaming it, but maybe the origin of that is that sketch comedy is a young person's game. Do you think that's true? Uh, I think it's true, but I also think, uh, do you remember rock and roll? It's dead now. Um, yeah, yes. I think rock and roll, <laughs> I think rock and roll and sketch comedy are both young people's games. But I also think that if you're good at it, um, 
be sad not to keep doing it. It'd be uh, sad not to do the Rolling Stones again, uh, to see them on tour again. Am I frozen? Have I frozen? You are frozen. There we go. You're good now. You can hear me at least. Yes, you're good. I wasn't going to say anything, by the way. I was just going to let it slide. (laughs) Well, I I saw that you were trying to hide the panic. Yeah, I was like, uh, you you can tell tell that deer in headlights look. You've probably seen it many times in your career. Did the kids ever bomb? I freeze, it's... Pardon? Have you, you have the kids in the hall what? yourself ever bombed before in front of a live audience? Oh, yeah. I was oh, just wondering oh, geez. that. I have so many bomb stories that are too long for me to tell you. We bombed like crazy. Oh, we bombed. Uh, I'm sure in the early Scott days. Thompson but... and I, once did a, 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 the five of us were supposed to do a show, then the three other guys um, couldn't make it, so Scott and I did a show and then um, at the Elma Combo in Toronto, which is famous if you're in Toronto. And uh, afterwards, the host came out and said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those were the two weakest members of the kids in the hall. <laughs> I'm sure the three good ones will be back <laughs> and make TV shows and do very well. Um, yeah, no, we bombed. We bombed. I mean, uh, when we first started our, our stage shows, the one that we did for a year every Monday that got us discovered by Lauren Michaels, blah, 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 blah. Um, we, um, uh, we bombed all the time at first. And then things got better and our audience sort of built and we did, just got better. The good news is, uh, is that getting used to bombing is important. Uh, yeah. It, it makes you uh, being more comfortable with experimenting. But if you ever say I'm experimenting, you'll ruin comedy. Uh, hopefully you're just a natural Shit. experimenter. I say that on stream a lot. I like to experiment. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I try to do comedy with streaming, and it's a different sort of a, a beast in that you have to do – you don't have to do long hours, but um, I try to treat it you as do, a – You're a workaholic. Well, I just feel like that's what works in streaming is to be available for like, you know, like it's like radio, but getting with video. Sleep? I'm worried about you now. You I sleep? didn't sleep well last night. I was pretty nervous since I, I used to tape Kids in the Hall um, every on Comedy Central, 7.30 p.m. every night on, on a VHS tapes. Remember them? those? Uh, so they're yeah, in the I attic covered this. in squirrel shit, but. Um, <laughs> I know people that chose beta. Chose beta. Beta, beta yeah. might be better quality, honestly, if you want to see those bright blue right. eyes. That's what they say. The, the people that still have the, the sad people, uh, they they live in their mother's place, even though they're 50 now, and they have roads. But that's what they, they say. They, they go there as um, they're the, the documentary I revisited from Amazon Prime is like, if you're a Kids in the Hall fan, it's probably one of the greatest things to watch. So um, I was that just was cur- good. I was surprised. I- because I saw them, of course, making it. I didn't think it was going to be any good, but it, it was really good. That was the vibe you guys were like, is this going to be any good? <laughs> when you're sitting in the river yeah, making it. Uh, just because of one thing. <laughs> and I guess I was wrong. And the others, the other, it didn't bother the others in the, uh, as much. But they wanted us to, because uh, we're the kids in the hall. Kids in the hall. So mm-hmm. they wanted us to do our interviews in a, in a school hall. School <sighs> for the kids, hall. Kids was that an hall. Amazon directive? <laughs> no, it was the director's idea. That's and, so sad. Uh, I thought that was stupid. Um, but two two of us did do it, but you can't really see that it's a hall. And they they had the school for the day, so I did it in the gymnasium. What a, it's like, have they ever seen the show? Like, it's, like, like it's not, that's not yeah. the premise of it, like that you start every scene in a, in a hallway. It's just a uh, Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, and you know how many times in my life that I've been in a hall where people go, hey, you're in the hall, and you're in the hall. That's how you know they're not a real fan, right? That's how. That's when you don't give yeah, autographs. Yeah, sure, they are real fans, but they're missing. And a lot of real fans, like, uh, they also like comedians that I would never like. So, <laughs> that I, happens. But I love them. I love everybody, and I love that, our fans. I'm that not happens with me, too. Fans. I get it. Um, there you go. Did you, um, did you tour when you were doing the first five seasons? Uh, it's said in the uh, documentary you guys were touring, but did you, did you go on tours like off at off time when you weren't filming? Question, because the, uh, the documentary really miss up the time. We did do uh, mini tours around southern Ontario. Okay, That's and did, did you, you weren't working I'm material? I'm trying to answer that question funny, but I can't. No, uh, I just was we, curious because uh, that that was dropped in there, and I was just curious if you. I mean, you guys weren't working out material on the road, right? Probably it was just like doing No, no, we did like for a weekend to make a little extra money because we were on Canadian TV. And we had signed, in our lawyer's words, the worst uh, contract in TV history. Uh, (laughs) Like like dating back to Milton (laughs) Berle. So we uh, did uh, little things like that. Uh, Once we were flown to Nashville because um, there was was a full weekend. 
uh, millions of acts doing 15 minutes. There were people, promoters from different colleges, and they were going to sign the people they liked. Um, and then you'd go on a college tour. And we didn't get uh, one offer after that. We did our weird, we did it like, a, God bless us, I guess, but we did our weird sketches. We did Reg, where we're like uh, drinking yeah. beer, sad about our friend Reg is dead. Though it turns out that we killed him, but we strangled him with piano wire. Classic. Um, like, I don't think we picked the right sketches for, like, uh, college promoters. Uh, but it was fun to go to Nashville to perform the Grand Ole Opry. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I want to Chris Farley you and say that uh, I revisited the first two episodes, and you and Dave Foley have just tremendous chemistry, and that imaginary girlfriend sketch might be one of my favorites of all time from that oh, show. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I don't think it... Thank yeah, you, I'm people glad you are, like it, because yeah. we changed it a lot uh, in tone. It's Because uh, it, it's, it's one of the things we do on our tour. Uh, when we tour, um, and um, it's more sticky. I get to make more faces, but we try to do it not serious, but try to do it more realistic. So I think you're the only person who ever mentioned that, uh, the film of it. Uh, Did you guys write that together? Tour, you and Dave wrote uh, that? Dave, or? Actually, Dave wrote it. Um, Scott had written a bad scene. We were at a writing session for like uh, new sketches for the Turkish voice writer sketches. And Scott had written a, uh, a bad scene about an imaginary lover, imaginary something. And then we, as we were criticizing it <laughs> heavily, uh, Dave, we were in a big boardroom table. Dave was in the back of the table writing Imaginary Girlfriend. And by the time we finished uh, killing uh, Scott's scene, um, Dave said, I just wrote a sketch. And then awesome. um, we did it in the first tour. And I, like I add stuff because when we rehearse, like you get at, but it's like Dave basically wrote first draft, which is, more or less what the the thing is today dave 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 wrote it i can't take credit for that mr mr dave foley of, of uh mr dave foley yeah news radio i added a few funny guy. faces those are mine the funny faces are mine i love the staring out this the window is mine. i wrote this <laughs> you please um now did you guys film during covid for the new season Yes, How annoying was that? Uh, it seems like that would be the biggest pain in the ass for comedy. Uh, well, Anything. The, the hardest so. thing was uh, remembering to keep your mask on because you had to keep your mask on the whole time. Oh, and yeah. you'd go to set, you'd have to rehearse the scene in, uh, with your mask. And then um, each person, each Kindle Hall, had a, um, a mask person, uh, like a mask assistant. <laughs> And How much money was draining is, out of these shoots? Like it's just, I can just oh, imagine. It, it costs more money than the the budget. Uh, yeah. Amazon spent a, they spent a fortune protecting us and the crew, but there were like twenty three productions in Toronto, and we were the only production we shot for two months that didn't have any uh, any cases of COVID. So, is this the real reason you guys probably won't get another season? Is that the, <laughs> you were so yeah COVID cool. sort of uh, people don't care about COVID anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're funnier in COVID. We're funnier in diseases. Our show started with AIDS. We were. <laughs> <laughs> All the major diseases were, uh, were funny. Well, let's see if we maybe leukemia, we get a new one. We did leukemia. You can ride a yeah, new one out. Cancer <laughs> boy. Cancer boy. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yes, we did. For those of you uh, who don't know, we did a scene called Cancer Boy. It's Anyone who doesn't know the kids in the hall, and it's just a fan of yours, is probably wondering who this awful, evil. Uh, no, people. Is in, people in this community is. I'm pretty sure at least 69%, the funniest number on Twitch, by the way, 69, uh, right. do know Kids in the Hall. And I promoted it heavily for outside, just hoping to get some Kids in the Hall fans 69%. in here. You just say 69 all the time and people laugh. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk I about like Brain Candy. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, Brain Candy. Yes. I loved Brain Candy, and I was so excited. I didn't even know it was coming out. This is back when you just walked into the video store, you know what I mean? I remember walking to the video I, store and seeing you on the cover of The Godson and being like, what? Kevin's in movies? Sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, sorry. No, no. It's, there's it's no... a bad movie. I, I shouldn't say that. I should be the producers and directors, but I blame them. That it was a... <laughs> I guess I since don't. we're on that, any I... Dom DeLuise or Rodney Dangerfield I stories? love Dom DeLuise. Okay. Dom DeLuise, any Dom DeLuise anecdotes? He was just yes. very funny, very nice. He uh, he brought me to his house a few times, and he he, he grew the best tomatoes. <laughs> I, 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 if I keep talking, I'll think of a funny anecdote. <laughs> I grew the best tomatoes. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he's one of my many, many, one of my 4,000 comedy idols, so it was very exciting to, to work with him. Yeah, he's a and legend. he was as funny, yes, 
And he was as funny as I thought that, as I hoped that he would be. Um, and I'm not lying. I, I know, already I saw the director and the producers. You know I'm not lying at this point. I believe you. Know. you. Yeah, I mean, you threw some shots at The Godson, but then immediately you praised Dom DeLuise's performance in the film. Dom so, yes. Brain Candy, I loved it. You guys have always used it as sort of a punching bag. And I didn't know why. Then I watched the documentary, and it's like everyone's lives are falling apart during the making of this movie. And I'm like, yeah. holy shit, they forced Dave Foley by lawsuit to be in the movie uh, because he wanted a news radio, and there's a riff there. You're going through a divorce. Scott's brother dies. It's just like, is that why you guys are just like, that thing is like this giant uh, black hole? <laughs> like, it just yeah. like brings also back so many bad memories? Also, we're like method writers. We're writing a movie, a comedy, but we're writing a movie about depression. It's so, so crazy. Uh, all these things were happening. My brother-in-law also like died tragically young, and it was um, uh, wow. I know that. And David, Dave was like, like, I could be married four or five more times, uh, but Dave was sort of my first wife. Dave was sort of like my first girlfriend. So when he split up with the troop, it was like he split up with me. And but we were, but then we had to write about depression all the time. And, I just and can't imagine. Got in a real black hole. You guys must have best been so seasoned that at that point, when you know, when you're just doing the scenes or the writing, you can sort of turn that off. But that just seems like. Well, it was hard. Uh, Dave, like like Dave, I said, like is the love of my life in a way. Uh, and uh, we hadn't talked for a few months, and then he flew in the day before his first day, and the first scene we were shooting was a big scene between him and I. And um, I was a little nervous, and the chemistry wasn't there the first few takes, then it came back, but it was uh, it was nerve wracking. And like his trailer was like on the other side of the tracks of the, of like there was separation yes, there, yes. wouldn't eat with you guys, all this sort of crazy stuff that I didn't know at the time. Wow, that's yeah. just- uh... He ate with me. We just exaggerate <laughs> for the documentary. Because, I was uh, curious. <laughs> He would eat with me, even though I, I, he was the maddest of me. It's, it's still like a, it's ritual for us to eat together. Well, it's like you said, you guys are, uh, it's uh, always getting back with your first ex-girlfriend sort of a vibe, maybe. Like you, this has happened yeah, a yeah. few times, but the chemistry is always yeah. there, and you're always in love. Yeah, with each other. yeah, like, like, like the always pairs always fight. But I, first of all, I was never in a fight with any pair. And Dave, like I said, he. I, I, I'm boring, but um, but Dave was like my first. He was my first girlfriend in a way. Um, Comedy uh, girlfriend, a real yeah, girlfriend. Because, well, I mean, in a way. <laughs> in a way. Because I didn't have any girlfriends because I was shy and chubby, and um, and then I met Dave when I was 19. He warned me up for having girlfriends. Like I would call him at night. How was your day, Dave? Oh, uh, you know, a funny <laughs> thing happened, Dave. Uh, oh, oh, Dave, that's so hilarious. Dave. So can you see me tomorrow? Oh, you can't see me tomorrow. All right. No, no, I thought you said you could. That, that, that's, he warned me up for uh, my fir my first real girlfriend. He eased you into uh, romantic relationship uh, life. Relationship yeah. talk. That's wild. Yes. Holy shit. Yes. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm just really nervous, and I'm looking over my three pages of notes that I scribbled down here. You don't seem nervous. You seem very calm, and you don't mind big spaces of uh, silence. So I don't think that's nervous. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've done. I've been uh, doing this calm. for a while, but. Uh, I've just been doing it like by myself, improv and comedy, and all I have is reactions are uh, when people g get an emoji of laughter. <laughs> you can imagine what that's like trying to do comedy and there's no real laughter. Yeah. So we did this thing where they, if there's enough emojis of laughter, like three threshold, it'll play like a laugh track soundtrack to make me wow. feel like there's an audience. So that's what's happening in that's the background the as, as, I'm, as I'm talking to you, which is, what I thought I was I going to turn I don't hear it, off. so that makes it more weird. I don't yeah. hear the laughter. I um, hope that your laughs tonight. Managing reoccurring characters. Do you guys think you did it well? Like, was sometimes was there a premise before using a character? Uh, was premise the top, or did you write for the characters? I know, like, Chicken Lady and stuff like that, but did you sometimes it feels like you slotted characters into a premise? I always thought you did really good organic character work and stuff. That's a good question. Um, I don't know if you're going uh, this way with the question, but I'm going to force you to go this way. Uh, yeah. I would have two, the first part of your question, I would have uh, two different types of answers. Did we do good with running characters? Career-wise, no, because we should have done them a lot more. We did Head Crusher and Chicken Lady like enough, but uh, there were a lot of others we didn't do that much. But creatively, we had this rule. We had this rule that, because um, we had a read-through during the writing period uh, the, of, uh, of the running of the show, um, we had a read through every Friday, 
and a scene had to be good on its own merits. Uh, we couldn't just put the scene in because it had a, had a running character. We're in Saturday Night Live. Um, uh, Lauren would say, you know, we need a photocopier guy sketch. You know, yeah, yeah. Write that one up. We were never like that. Um, Mark just really had lots of ideas for Chicken Lady Head Crusher. And, uh, and the ones that got in, we really loved. But there was a lot more that we didn't get in. And I, I'm really a career killer uh, because it's hard for me to write more than once for that character. Simon Hecubus was uh, easier because um, I wrote the first one. And then Dave and Norm Hiscock are brilliant. The writer who's not on, uh, who's not seen on the show. Well, for a lot of the other sketch shows too, them. yeah. Yes. Yeah. He sort of uh, they sort of wrote most of the rest, and I put my voice in a little bit. Um, but the Will Do guy, I only did twice, and the second one wasn't that good, so uh, I stopped it. Um, I like I, it's hard for me to think of running. Were there ever scripts written for like a Simon and Hackybus film or any of the things of that nature? Or well, we uh, strangely enough. Uh, it'll never happen, but right now, uh, Norm and Dave and I are uh, thinking of making it a cartoon. Holy like shit, a, really? Adult Swim kind of thing. You're a Canadian. You're, you know you know Adult Swim, though. You know everything about Tommy. I'm Canadian uh, by... I'm from America, but I fantasize about being Canadian, I guess. I used to have a Canadian flag oh, so in my that's room. That's a fake Canadian flag? That's this a fake is, Canadian This is just flag? a backdrop. I'm not in the mountains of Brampton. Uh, of, uh, You're not Brampton. in the mountains. I'm not in the mountains of Brampton. <laughs> I was going to get this guy a blanket. He's Everyone like, thinks I'm Canadian. And I was telling the kids in the hall that my parents, uh, we were in Niagara Falls, and I said, let's go to Toronto. And I'm like, we're a bunch of country bumpkins, right? And I'm trying to find, we're trying to find like CBC Studios because I want to buy a t-shirt. It probably wasn't a t-shirt. It's available that much of kids in the hall, even in like 98 oh, we or whatever. We were in CBC Studios. Yeah. We were in a tiny little, uh, tiny little studio um, by the, the sleazy part of town. So I bought a Canadian flag and I put it up on my top of my TV. Okay, I'm good. You're good. You're back. You're back. I'm back. I'm back. Good, good. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Can you go like nine, uh, more, nine minutes? more minutes? Nine more minutes is okay. You all right with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I just want to make oh, sure. Yeah. I don't oh, want to. Yeah, keep... <laughs> I'm, Maybe... I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself so much. I thought, oh, it's time is really zipping by. And I go, no, it isn't zipping by. <laughs> but it's, I'm enjoying myself. It's it's good. It's just weird that I was I was like simulating talking to you. I do that all the time. Like have fantasy conversations. Do you do that with like sketches in your head? Do you like play it out in your head? Like. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, like new sketches or old sketches that I'm gonna like. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of shows uh, this summer. A show with Bruce, we're gonna do old sketches, and a show with and new sketches, and a show we're gonna oh, yeah, let do me with Dave. And I walk around walking my dog downtown Winnipeg, and uh, you're a good fake Canadian, so you know what Winnipeg is. And, yes. Um, and people like uh, they drive by me and they see me talking. They think I'm talking to myself, but I'm just going over my line. I do that all the time when I'm at Sometimes Arby's at work. I'll be talking to myself yes. and having conversations, and I don't realize it's coming out of my mouth sometimes, my thoughts. It's really, well, let me just promote some of your dates real quick before I forget. Uh, you, do on, uh, you do workshops? Can we get a free sample of what a workshop with Kevin McDonald's sketch workshop would be like? What do you, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't teach you comedy. I can only <laughs> teach you the rules of it. You're, you're not. It's angry, I'm very angry. Say so get out. Get on. If you're into anger, I'm the workshop to go to. I got a lot of anger, so I get it. Uh, that's in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Saturday, June 24th, yeah. at the Box yeah. Theater. You're with Bruce and uh, Bruce McCullough, Kevin McDonald, the Rivoli, where you yeah. all started. That's yeah. still going strong. Yeah. Wednesday, yeah. July 26, yeah. 2023, 7 p.m. and Friday, July 28, 2023. Uh, Dave Foley at GalaxyCon. What do you guys? You guys go to conventions? Is that what it's called? Yeah, GalaxyCon. Uh, Raleigh. Uh, oh, Dave. Oh, you mean Dave is going? Yeah, I'm not going to. Galaxy oh, that's just says Dave. Okay. Sorry, my bad. But you're gonna do. That's this looks good. exciting. The Bell House, in Brooklyn, New York. Yes, yes, the rock opera. I'm doing my uh, rock opera that I wrote with. Uh, it's a minor celebrity uh, fest. Uh, I, yep. I've done this a lot. And it's a tr based on a true story, and usually I hire someone else to play Dave Foley, but Dave lives in New York, so <laughs> Dave Foley will be playing Dave Foley. That's awesome. Uh, and Dave Hill, do you know Dave Hill? Yes, yeah, so I've, um, I've, I've heard of, uh, he had the radio show, I think, on WFMU or something, and I've seen, I've, I've heard yeah. of him before. Julie Klausner. He's a genius comedian and guitarist, and he'll be playing Scott Thompson. Oh, wow, and, that's uh, how you're doing it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone yeah. plays somebody else? Who's Julie Klausner? And Julie Klausner. Who Julie wrote Klausner for the new season, correct? Wife, uh, yeah. Yes. 
and she's playing my first wife, uh, Cheater. Oh, wow. This sounds fabulous. August, story. August 31st at the Bell House yes. in Brooklyn, New York. Anyone that's in the New York City area. And September 1st. They just, uh, they just added a show. Uh, September 1st, too. celebrities were selling out. Damn. I mean, it looks like a damn good show. And Dave and I are, uh, in the beginning of August, uh, are playing, uh, you don't have that, the uh, Omaha Fe I'm becoming like a guy in Johnny Carson. Plug I set it better, up for you. Know? I set it up. I'm told. I mean, you're doing this to a <laughs> average 69 viewer Twitch streamer that does comedy. So let it out, babe. Let it out. Any of your dates? Are you too young to know that uh, time Bob Hope was on uh, Johnny Carson? He pretended he had to leave at the end of his interview. He wouldn't stay in the couch. They, uh, Johnny would say, "But Bob, you have to go somewhere." And then he would get up and wave the room and leave. I don't. I, I don't know why I'm bringing that up. It's okay. I didn't know that one. I'm in my mid 40s, so I do know Johnny Carson references. I do know going to the couch yes. is important, but I have not yes. seen many Bob Hope clips of him. And I know that Jack Benny had great timing. That's just yes. that's been pushed on yes. me. I don't know for sure. I think I tried to watch him and I got a little bored. But um, the biggest laugh in uh, comedy radio history. Uh, I know we only have uh, five minutes. Is uh, Jack Benny. Uh, whose uh, reputation, his character of Jack Benny was that he was very cheap, and then there were uh, he's uh, and he played himself in his radio show, and he's um, on the radio show he's uh, apparently walking down the street, and uh, some uh, thief comes in front of him, and you hear the sound. Is that true? You hear the sound of a gun? Is there a sound of a gun being pulled out? And he says, um, "Your money or your life." And there was a, the longest pause ever, and then Jack Benny said, "I'm thinking it over," and it's one of the biggest laughs in. Uh, the laugh started during the pause because they knew where the joke was going. They didn't know the wording because his reputation for being cheap. Yeah, pauses are important. Milk counts to thirty. Yeah, you know that. This is comedy one hundred and one to milk a pause, and uh, timing. Um, his timing was slow. What's your favorite pizza toppings? Do they have pizza in Canada? Pizza, pizza. They have yes, pizza. Uh, yes, I guess American. Uh, I. Um, I it seems like I'm uh, about to ups like upset people on purpose by lying, but this is true. I do like pineapple on my pizza. That's okay. Every time? Every time? Every time. Oh, I have a whole, I had a whole Every bit on time. This. I had a whole bit on Unless that. Unless the person I'm on the phone to says, no, I don't like it. I don't have it here. But other than they get that, mad I at you. We don't have it here. No. Yeah. Th no. Um, Only if I have a sad, lonely pizza by myself. Because if I'm having, if I'm ordering pizza for people, nobody wants pineapple on it. I could say, could you put a sad piece of pineapple on one slice of pizza? And they say it's too much work. I um, get it. The I sweetness with the saltiness. High pitched uh, voice, people. <laughs> yes. Um, what was I going to say? I mean, you mentioned the Tim Robinson right. sketch show is amazing. Is there any other uh, comedians yeah. out there you'd love to work with or you're uh, inspired by? Oh, millions, but I go blank when people ask me that. Uh, millions. You know who I'd really like to work with? This sounds like a joke, too. He's not a comedian, but I've been a fan for 30 years. Chuck D. I always feel that wow. Chuck D and I should be friends. Wow. I just think, like, Chuck would get upset. He'd have a fight with his wife. He'd call me, it's Chuck Chuck, what is it? What, what is it, man? You're crying. I don't. It's just an honest. Crazy. You just honestly feel like you guys would vibe together and have great telephone conversations I, late at I'm night. I'm a big fan. I'm honestly a big fan of Public Enemy, and, and I, I really, I really feel Chuck's a friend. I'm not kidding. I honestly mean. Uh, my last thing. It's about brain candy. What the fuck was Roger Ebert's problem with that movie? He's just like... I know! I'm just like, I don't understand. Well, did he hate Kids in the Hall? Like, it just seems like he would hate anything you guys did. It was so weird. I know, because he's never refused to review a movie before. Like, uh, I've seen the clip a few times. Gene Siskel liked it. And yeah, then, uh, he liked it a lot. Roger was quiet. And then Gene says, what, what, what do you think about it? He goes, no, nope, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about this movie. I'm not gonna... uh, um, Scott has a theory. I don't know. Can I say it on your show? Yeah, let it out. I want to know the scoop, the theory. It's not that bad, but it's 2023, and I don't want to upset anyone. No, let it um, out. It's Scott's theory, uh, <laughs> and it has no basis in any fact. It is or just logic a. Or any story. This is a theory. It's, it's a hypothetical just, theory, Scott guys. It's a crazy theory that, that no one has ever said ever about him. But um, and of course, Scott made it about himself because his character Wally, the closeted gay in the uh, yes. gay man in, his, in the, the movie. Great musical um, sequence with that. His the movie. theory was that maybe Roger was a closeted gay man and he couldn't handle the truth. Um, don't sue Juicy. me, Roger Ebert's family. I'm, the, I'm, I'm telling the story in the spirit of Scott being crazy. It's not true. Don't sue. Or if you do sue me, do you live in Hollywood? I'd like to come to Hollywood <laughs> for the trial. Sue me if you live in Hollywood. That would be fun. I'll buy a the, suit. This is theory. Uh, this is. 
We got to end with that one. That's the juiciest uh, tidbit of the night. Uh, Kev McDonald, an honor, privilege, and a pleasure for real. I've been a huge Kids in the Hall fan, and uh, thanks for taking your time out for 30 minutes to talk to me. And uh, um, I'm I cherish. About to go bomb in an improv show now. You're gonna kill it. You're gonna kill it. We're both gonna kill it tonight. I cherish your butt, and thank, thank you. you, and have a great show. Thank you very much. Thank Good night. you. Bye bye. Kevin McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! We did it. We did it. We got through it. Papa like me, maybe. Did Papa like me? Hey, this is Abba Box. Please like and subscribe to the video if you've enjoyed it. Also, if you want to see even more weird stuff, go on over to twitch.tv slash Box, where I stream oh, it's about three times a week. Thank you for watching. And I cherish your butt. Love you.